Hey yo, I'm BF Portal Pro, and today we're going to be going forward with part 2 of our gun game tutorial. If you want your portal game to have a responsive UI that alerts the player of their current score, as well as updates on opponent status, we're going to be implementing that today. We'll also be implementing a complex scoring mechanic that requires multiple kills per gun in order to move on, as well as being set back if you were killed by a melee weapon. These mechanics can be modified however you see fit for your game, so with that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into the editor and pick up where we left off. If you haven't followed my previous tutorial, you're going to want to go ahead and do that by clicking the card in the top right or the link in the description. That video will take you to this point exactly. If you did follow that video, you might be experiencing some random server crashes. This is due to a bug in Get Player Kills currently, so we'll start today by changing those to be Get Game Mode Score Components. With that change, the game should function properly. Do keep in mind that while Battlefield 2042 is quote unquote released, we're all very aware of the beta-like state of many gameplay mechanics. So if you have a bug that just doesn't make sense, it might not be your fault. Try and get creative to achieve the same thing in a different way. The best way to narrow down bugs without anything in the error log is to remove one code block at a time until the game no longer bugs out, and then try and rework that one component. With our game back to functional, let's go ahead and jump into creating a responsive UI that lets the player know their current score. To do that, we'll go to our kill earned rule and add a new action from the user interface tab, the same place we got our welcome message component for the first video. Instead of a game mode message though, we're going to want to grab a display notification message component. This action is super helpful for making a quick UI, as it defaults to displaying for 6 seconds in the top right of the player's screen. You can of course choose to use a display custom message component and have more granular control over your UI, but we really don't need that for this. With our new component assigned underneath the kill earned rule, we can see that it's asking for a message component. Let's go ahead and copy and paste our message component from our welcome message, and put it in the first parameter slot. We can edit this message to say curly braces open and close slash 10, where 10 is the number of guns to work through in your game. If we look at the help panel for the message component, we can see that it treats these curly braces as a placeholder to replace with any other text. In this case, we'll grab the same get game mode score component and add it to the second parameter on our message. Next, we want our message to only display to the player it applies to, so let's grab a copy of event player and put it on the last parameter for display notification message to tell it who to send the message to. In a team-based game, you could also place a reference to a team here to update the team on their cumulative progress. If we save and head into Battlefield, we can see that every time we get a kill, we get a status update in the top right. Awesome. What if another player is on the last weapon? We should notify everyone that they need to pick up the pace or risk losing. To do that, we're going to add a control action if block. These are helpful if you don't want a whole rule to be conditional, and instead only want a certain portion of actions to be conditional. Let's add this under kill earned. In the help panel, we can see that it's looking for a boolean in its parameter slot. To do this, we can go to the logic section and grab the equals component and drag it into the if blocks parameter. We'll then grab the get game mode score for event player, and we'll put it in the first equals slot. Then we'll grab a number literal and enter the score we want players to be warned at, in this case it would be 9. Inside of this if block, we can then add a display game mode component. I'll just copy my welcome message up here and drag it inside. Let's edit the message to say curly braces is on the final weapon. We'll tell the game to replace those curly braces with the event player, which will then display the player's name. We'll leave the recipient field blank in the last parameter for the display game mode component so everyone can see that the game is about to end. Again, if we save and head into the game and get 9 kills, we can see the warning pop up at the top of the screen. Awesome, we've created a responsive UI for our players that allows them to keep track of their status in the game. A custom UI is a great way to make your game feel more tailor-made and polished and helps users understand what's going on. Another common feature in gun game is a demotion mechanic. Previously, I stated that there was no way to determine if a player was killed by a knife in Portal. This is actually false. I recently figured out a way to do this, and it's pretty easy. Essentially, when we kill someone, we're going to check and see what the active weapon of the event player was, and if it was a knife, the other player should get demoted. Let's go ahead and implement this. To do this, we'll grab another control action if and place it under our kill earned rule. Currently, there is a bug with the is inventory slots active block, which determines what the player is currently holding. As of right now, it is not working for melee. However, we can still use the block, we just have to check if the kill was not using the primary weapon. We can do this by adding an equals block in our if statement. We'll put an is inventory slots active block with the event player for the first parameter and a player inventory slots item set to the primary weapon. Now we have a section of code that will run when the kill a player earned was a melee. Let's go ahead and decrease the other player's score with a set game mode score component. 
Of course, if the other player's score is zero, we can't decrease it any further. So let's add another if statement inside of this if statement. In the open slot, we can add a not equals to component. This will allow us to make sure the other player's current score is not equal to zero. Let's add a get game mode score component and place it in the first open slot. Assign it an event other player variable and then grab a number literal and enter zero in the last slot for the if statement. Now we're saying if the player's game mode score doesn't equal zero, then we should do something. Now we can use a set game mode score component to change the other player's current score. We'll drag that in the if block, grab our event other player and place it in the first reference. Next we'll grab a subtract block, place it in the second slot for set game mode score. Now we'll use get game mode score again and in the second slot place a number literal with the value of one. Awesome. Now if we knife someone and they have any points, they'll be subtracted by one the next time they spawn and be demoted. We can also send a notification to this other player to help the game feel responsive and explain to them why they are now demoted. Let's grab a display highlighted world log component and place it below our set game mode score block. We can then copy and edit a message component to say curly braces was slashed and demoted by curly braces. Next, we can put our event other player into the first slot and event player value into the third parameter of the message component. Now when we save and go try in game, everyone can see when a player was demoted. That's awesome and super fun. This is another perfect example of custom game UI making your creation feel polished. The next thing I want to implement in our gun game is a minimum number of kills required to rank up your gun. Except, now that we are using game score to determine our weapon and demotion, we need to detach our kills from score. In order to do this, we'll grab an enable default game mode scoring component and drag it into our game start rule. Then we'll grab a boolean literal and set it to false to tell the game to not add to the score when kills are required. Next thing we want to do is to determine how many kills per weapon we want to require. Let's go to our variables tab on the left hand side and click manage variables. We're going to add a new global variable in order to store our desired score count. Let's call this rank up kills required and click create. Let's also create a variable to store our player's progress. Create another variable, assign it to the player and let's call this one kill progress. To start, we need to define our rank up kills required variable. In our game start rule, let's add a set variable action. Then we'll grab a variable reference and set it to be our rank up kills required. Then we'll grab a number literal and set it to however many kills you want it to take to rank up. In our case, two. Next, we need to add to our kill progress when we get a kill. Let's head down to our kill earned rule and add a set variable action here. We'll set our variable to be player and then kill progress. In the last open slot, we'll need to get our player's current kill progress and add one to it. Grab an add block and a get variable and a number literal to achieve this. Great, now we can get another if statement from the control actions and add it under our set variable component for kill progress. Inside the if statement, we need to check if our kill progress is greater than or equal to the required kills to rank up. We want to check for greater than or equal to instead of just equals to because the player could potentially get a multi-kill with a grenade or something similar and if they bypass the required kills, we still want them to rank up. So add a greater than equals to component and put it in the if statement we just added. Next, we'll get a get variable component to get the player's current kill progress and another get variable to check the global rank up kills required. Awesome, now everything inside this block will only run when we reach the progress requirement. We can also reset our kills progress here as we're about to rank them up and start them over again on this cycle. So let's grab a copy of our set variable, replace the value with a number literal and the value can be zero. Let's move our replace inventory component to be inside of this control action as well as the rank up notification. Make sure all your other if statements are outside of this one because those should happen every kill. Since we disabled our default game mode scoring, we also need to add to the game mode score when they rank up. Let's grab a set game mode score component and add it before our replace inventory component. We can assign an event player to the first parameter and then we'll need to put an add block in the second parameter. In the first slot of the add block, add a get game mode score component with the our event player referenced. Then we'll put a number literal in the second slot with the value of one. Now when we reach our kill progress, sweet, now you rank up and your progress is reflected in the score. We should also set zero to be the default value when creating the game. If you want the game to be more challenging and require both kills to be on one life, you can also reset the value to zero when the player dies. In order to do this, we should add two new purple rule blocks. The first one, we will set the event to on player join game. We'll copy our set variable from our rank up logic and put it here. Now when a player joins, we'll make sure they're initialized with a kill progress of zero. 
instead of assuming what an empty variable will behave like. In our second rule block we added, we'll change the event to on player irreversibly dead. We'll copy that same set variable and add it here. And just like that, our game mode now properly tracks scoring and requires multiple kills in order to rank up. An excellent exercise would be to apply the same custom UI skills I showed you earlier to alert the player to their kill progress. Go ahead and give it a try. A helpful debugging tip I want to share with you guys if you are experiencing any issues or portal randomly crashing for some reason. Before your on player deployed actions and on player kill actions, and really any action, you can add a weight with a value of 0.25. This adds a weight for a quarter of a second, almost imperceptible to the player, but allows the server to process everything before trying to work with the data. Until Portal is more stable, this is a handy workaround to make sure everything runs smoothly. This should be something that they're able to fix server side eventually. With that, our gun game is working really well with all the feature sets that players are used to. Feel free to adjust anything you want at this point, including going back and changing health and damage values to change the time to kill. Every portal game is unique, and that's what makes it so cool. So go ahead and mess around with yours until it feels right, and then head to www.bfportal.pro to submit it for everyone to play. We're going to be launching our server browser in the next couple of days, and I can't wait to share the game modes with everyone. Also, be sure to join our Discord. Tons of valuable tips, tricks, and debugging help has already been shared by more and more people. Jump in the conversation with the link in the description. Also, be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and click the notification bell to be alerted when I release new videos about BF Portal. Of course, you can also find my Twitter and all relevant links in the description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.